Hey everybody, it's Pastor Joe here on a Sunday morning um, to do the children's Bible story this week, and I'm all by myself today. Um, I uh, was hoping to have a, uh, a couple of individuals with me um, to help me with this this morning, and things just didn't work out. And so um, I want to I wanna bring you a lesson, and uh, you can see I have some extra things here with me that I'm going to use in a little while. Um, but today I want to uh, welcome you to Westway Christian Church, and uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, what it must be like or what it is like um, when we find ourselves in a position where there's a lot of change going on around us. This week and this month uh, here at Westway, we are talking about transition. And um, there's a story in the Bible that John is going to mention um, later this morning in the 1015. He's going to talk about this a little bit more. Um, but I'm going to be maybe a little bit more specific about one particular part of the story that he's going to mention um, this morning about three boys who, actually four boys, but in this particular part we're going to talk about three boys, um, and they found themselves removed from their homes and their families and moved to a new country, a new place a new king, and new rules to live by. Um, but before we get to that story, I want to I wanna sing a song that some of you children will recognize from Children's Church. Um, maybe I'll do a couple of them, actually, uh, from Children's Church. The, the first one um, talks about Jesus, the Son of God, um, and Him being the light that leads the way for us. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more uh, after we read the Bible story. But right now, uh, I want you just to think about the words of this song and listen um, to what they say. You are the light that guides my way through sin. I know the path will lead me to the King in all the world. You are the God who changed the world through this one holy son who gave everything so all the world would bow in awe of him. He came down great to show a better way. I follow the Son, he's the only one. Let your To show a better way 
You came down through grace to show a better way. I follow the Son, He's the only one. Let your kingdom come. I'm giving your my all to the one I love. I follow the Son, Jesus, Holy One. Let your will be done. I give it all to you. I follow the Son. this morning, there are these three boys who had purposed um, to follow God, no matter where they were, no matter what happened to them, no matter what the rules were that they had to listen to, they were going to follow God. And they were going to do what he had told them to do. And um, so sometimes that means that the situation around us may make it a little bit hard for us to do that. And we may be tempted not to follow what we know it is right. Um, sometimes we find out that when we do follow God and do what he tells us to do, it might be a little bit scary, a little bit frightening. And we may not know whether we can carry through with that or not. I was just out to Omaha last weekend and um, we visited our son and his wife and their two children and we happened to bring home um, one of their children along with three other of our grandchildren that came down from Minnesota to, to meet us. But little Addie had to go to the doctor on, um, I believe it was Monday morning no, actually, it was um, last Friday morning that she had to go to the doctor. Anyway, when she went, she was a little bit frightened. She knew that she was going to have to have a shot. In fact, she ended up having five shots because she was a little behind um, because of having to be quarantined. And so when she went in, she was a little bit scared. You know what? There are a lot of times in life where there's things that we need to do, but it's scary to do them. That's really what this story is gonna talk about today. And so I'm gonna hold this where I hope you can see it, and I'm gonna read um, to you from this children's Bible, and it says this. It says, King Nebuchadnezzar, you can see the king there, was so angry that his face got all scrunched up and almost turned purple. Why was he so mad? You know, we wonder about this, and we wonder um, what it was that happened to make the king angry. Well, let's read on and see. It says, Nebuchadnezzar declared that everyone had to bow down to a huge golden statue he had made of himself. He was so proud of who he was that he made this great, big, tall statue of himself and told people, you have to bow down to it. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that God was the only one that they should worship. But this made King Nebuchadnezzar so angry no one disobeyed the king. The king demanded to have the men tied up and thrown into the furnace. 
He even ordered to have the furnace turned up seven times hotter than normal. Ouch! It was hot. When King Nebuchadnezzar peeked into the furnace to see, to see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he was surprised. Now, before I go on in this story, I want to show you something. I want to do something here. You can see on my little table here that I have a candle. And I'm going to light this candle. And even though the, the flame from this candle is very small, if I were to put my finger over that flame, it would burn me. Do you believe me? Well, it would. I'm going to show you. I'm not going to put my finger over it. I might put it through it, but if I were to have to be touching that flame and it wouldn't be pulled away, it would burn my hand. And this is how that would work. Who can tell me what this is? Can you see it? Yeah, it's a marshmallow. And we use marshmallows and we put them over the fire. But when we put them over the fire, what happens to the marshmallow? Now, if I just put it there for a little bit, you can see it begins to turn that marshmallow black. And if I hold it there for very long at all, look what happens to the marshmallow. It lights on fire. Now imagine what it must have been like for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be thrown into the fiery furnace, their hands bound up tight, and they were thrown into that fiery furnace. And not only was it just any fiery furnace, this furnace, the king was so angry that he said to them, turn it up seven times hotter. So it would be like me putting seven more candles or six more candles around this flame. But it wasn't just a candle that was in that furnace. It was much, much hotter than a candle. It was filled with wood or coal, and it wasn't just a little furnace. It was big enough that there was a doorway to open up and to throw these men inside the furnace. Now, why were they being thrown inside the furnace? They were being thrown inside the furnace because they wouldn't obey the king because he told them to do something that God said we shouldn't do. He told them to bow down to him and worship him. And we're only supposed to worship God. We're not supposed to worship any other person. We're not to worship any other God. We're not to worship ourselves. Ooh, that's a toughie. Because we like ourselves. Yeah. And oftentimes the only person we ever think about is ourselves. I want this. I want that. Give me this. Give me that. That's called being selfish. God doesn't want us to be selfish. King Nebuchadnezzar, he was selfish. Yeah. Well, we read that when he looked inside the furnace, when he peeked in, he was surprised. Let's see why. It says, he says, I thought we threw three men in there, he shouted, but I see four men walking around in there. And they aren't even tied up. They're fine. What's going on? The extra man in the furnace was an angel sent by God to protect the three men from the fire. The king flung open the door of the hot, fiery furnace and called, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out right now. When they came out, everyone noticed that the fire hadn't hurt them. They didn't even smell like smoke. If you were here in this room, you know what you'd smell right now? 
you'd smell that burnt uh, marshmallow. Yeah. And I only touched it to the flame for a little bit. But it turned black and smoke came from it. They didn't even smell like smoke. Wow. King Nebuchadnezzar was amazed, realizing what had happened. Your God sent an angel to protect you. You disobeyed me and forced or faced death rather than worship someone other than God. I declare that no one in any country can say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, because no God can do what their God can do. And so as we listen to that story, I think about what it must have been like for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It must have been a little scary. It must have been a little bit frightening when the king said, when the music is sounding. That's what the Bible says when you read it from the Bible. It says, when the music plays, you bow down to the statue of me. And they wouldn't do it. Were they, were they scared? Probably a little bit. But you know what? The reason why they didn't bow down was because they trusted God would take care of them. They believed that even if they were thrown in the fiery furnace, even if it killed them, if they died, it would be okay because they would be with God. But God did so much more than letting them die. He showed the king how powerful he was by not letting them be burned or not even letting the hair on his head, on their hair, head be burned. My hair, if I got too close to this little candle, would burn like that. If I were to stick my arm close to that candle, you would see the hairs on my arm just melt like that. That didn't happen with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In the Veggie Tales videos, they call them Rack, Shack, and Benny. <laughs> yeah, they weren't afraid at all. Um, it reminded me of another little song. And it's been a long, long, long time since I've sang this song, but I wanna sing just a little bit of it for you. It goes like this. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God whose word I praise. I think that's what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were doing. They believed that no matter what, they were going to trust in God. And he would take care of them one way or the other. And he did. You know what? When we're frightened or afraid, maybe... It's when the light gets turned out at night and it's dark. Who can we trust? We can trust God. Maybe it's when the storms come blowing through and the wind blows hard and you hear the trash can blowing around outside or the lightning flashes and the sun and the thunder roars. I remember running into my mom and dad's bedroom and hopping in the, and climbing under the covers because I was scared. <coughs> from the storm, excuse me. I don't know what it is that scares you. Maybe it's standing up and talking in front of somebody. I know for my wife, that's the way it is. She doesn't want to stand in front of anybody and talk. And it used to be that way for me. But you know what? I trusted God and he helped me to understand that he can use me in my talking to others. So guys, I want you to remember that. You know, that little song comes from a verse. It's found in Psalm chapter 56. And it, it goes like this. It, it, it starts with verse three, Psalm 56, verse three. But when I am afraid, I will put my trust 
in you. I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? In other words, what can anybody here on earth do to me? Because my God is greater than anything here on earth. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego believe that. They were looking forward to a day when the king would be there that they could worship. And that king eventually did come. And he came in a way that most people didn't expect. He was born in a stable. You know what his name was? It was Jesus. We can bow down and worship Jesus, can't we? When he was in the stable, there were some people that came to see him. You remember who they were? First, it was the shepherds, wasn't it? And they bowed down to worship Jesus, who was the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Later on, after he had gone home, I think it doesn't really say real clear in the scripture, but it was a while later, anyway, we know there were some kings that came and bowed down, or at least wise men that came and bowed down to Jesus because he's the one we're supposed to worship. Guys, when things change, when things are different, when it's not like we expected it to be, and we find that we're in different circumstances and things are different than we thought they were gonna be, who can we trust? We can trust God, can't we? and his son. And we can have the Holy Spirit to be with us, just like in the story, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had someone with them, didn't they? They had an angel with them. Some people believe that may have even been Jesus there with them. The Bible says he was like he was the son of God. Yeah. So, who are we going to follow? Who are we going to trust? Who is the king that we're going to pay attention to and bow down to? Yeah, Jesus, the Son of God. So let's remember that as we go through this week, as we go through this next month. Um, we've been living in a world full of change here recently. And we don't know where that's going to end up when it's all done and over. There may be a lot of differences when you come back to church. There may be a lot of changes when you go back to school. There might be a lot of changes even in your home, the way you do things. But who can we trust? We can trust God. Yeah. Um, for you grandmas and grandpas and maybe even moms and dads, you have probably heard that there is a convention coming up in September. And uh, it's for grandpas and grandmas specifically, but moms and dads could come too. And um, we're going to have a simulcast here at our church and possibly even in some of the homes in the area if we have that many people that register. Please look at the weekly email if you haven't done so already. There's information about how that's going to happen. And they reduced the price. So if you have not registered already, I encourage you to register for that. Um, Lord willing, we'll be having that convention. And it will be simulcast to us live right here at Westway Christian Church. And I was going to wear my legacy shirt that I got when I went to the convention in California last year and uh, with John and Ann and Cheryl. But um, I forgot to wear it today. So um, just, just think about that. Pray about that. Um, put it down on your calendar. And um, we'd love to have you join us here at the church. Thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you come back at 1015 and join in the, the church services. Um, we are going live this weekend here at Westway. It'll still be broadcast um, to you in your homes. And so uh, I pray that you will enjoy that and not only enjoy that, but be challenged by that and uh, that you'll be blessed by that. Have a great week.
God bless.